female character, um, often sort of like treating the rope as her dick. Um, and that that's sort of like the kind of drag performance that I feel like has a, a real ceiling in terms of how far it goes, right? Um, like if the sort of limit is you're pointing out that this gender too is constructed, that sort of feels like it's not really doing that much. And it's also kind of like, yes, thank you. That's old news, we know. Um, and so I think when we're sort of thinking about drag performances that do more than that, um, or not even necessarily drag, right? Like performances of one's gendered body in its code. Um, uh, I think performances that sort of do more to embrace like contradictions and ambiguities and movement, right? That don't necessarily sort of go with, okay, I'm just doing this like one, like performance of this one sort of gender and I may be pointing out how constructed it is in so doing, but I'm sort of, I'm going with it, I'm sticking with it, I'm staying in it. Like that can be fun, but I don't think it's actually sort of like accomplishing much in terms of that kind of like disobedience or, or subversion or whatever. Um, on the other hand, I think, I also think that sort of when you have a performance that sort of switches gender coding, but does it in a way to sort of polarize those gender codes, again, that tends to be sort of like, not that's that subversive. Right, like if you're like, if there's this shift in your gendering in the performance, but it, it really gets done in a way that creates a lot of distance between like thing one and thing two, um, then that there's also kind of sort of like a limit to how much that can do or how much that does, though it, it can be fun. And it can be like, you know, technically challenging to perform that distinction. Um, but I think the things that have sort of more movement right, and more ambiguity and more mixing or contradiction um, and that don't sort of like treat each gender performance as sort of like siloed um, do tend to be the drag performances that do more in that direction that you were asking about. Thanks for that, for that, Jordana. Um, Allison isn't here, so I'm just going to throw to Seb because I know you you've been trying to get in. So Seb and Francois, what's up? Hey, uh, hey guys. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for that panel. It was great. Um, I have um, a question again for Jordana. Um, and it's also coming, I'm, I'm myself an aerialist also. And it seems to me somehow that aerial is like a particularly fraught um, part of circus when it comes to gender, like both for men and for women. And, um, and the only, like the only other discipline I can think of that's so much, um, so difficult in terms of gender, I think is like contortion. And, and I wonder um, if there's something about the, the gaze that Ariel asks for or the way that Ariel is structured as a performance that is like inherently objectifying because of something about like showing a position, showing the body as, a, as an aesthetic form. And I, I, I often, um, something that I noticed in, for example, um, like training flexibility in circus spaces in Europe, for example, there was a lot of like judgment around flexibility training as if it was something that was kind of superficial or, um, and I and I am reminded often of this kind of distinction that um, I think it's David Halperin makes in that in his book How to Be Gay, where he talks about sort of like like gay male cultures, and the split between appearing and acting. That's like a gendered split. So I wonder, I was just wondering if you have any like reflections about um, the specificity of Ariel as like a difficult space for, um, 
for finding a sort of resistant gender performance? Or what is it about Ariel that seems to like attract these, these, these problems and these tensions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. And I was sort of like when you said if when you were starting to say if I can think of something else that's maybe like as much so I was like you're going to say contortion and then you said contortion, which I I am nowhere near being able to actually do a contortion act, but I also um, have been training in contortion over the pandemic so like I pick the other one that's like that issue. Um, Okay, so in some ways, I kind of want to say that you're right, because both Ariel and uh, contortion really sort of highlight the like, look at this body. But then it also kind of makes me go, but there are other other things that do that too, like hand balancing or partner balancing acro, they all tend to be very like, look at this human's body focused. And it's not that they have none of those same issues, particularly for like partner or group acro who, who bases and who flies and stuff and what they do tends to be very gendered. But I still think that you're right that there tends to be something sort of more intense about that, like intensely specularized and sort of look at this object body um, for Ariel and for contortion. And I'm not, I think I'm gonna have to like think about what makes that different. But I do also want to talk, address what you were saying about flexibility, because I think you're right, and it's it not just sort of in, in a European context, although it might be greater in that context, that there is sort of a degree to which flexibility training often gets treated as this sort of like superficial or more frivolous or like that you have to become bendy because you're not good enough to do other things kind of thing, even though flexibility training is really incredibly hard. Like once you're past like just passive stretching and you're into like serious active flexibility training, like my muscles hurt so much more from doing like serious flexibility training than like hours of aerial. Um, and I think that is like, I mean, that's obviously extremely gendered and it tends to sort of go along with as well those uh which disciplines tend to be sort of more gendered or more feminized too um but then there's also a way in which flexibility itself tends to be objectified and eroticized right that i think it's also tied into like how it's coded in terms of gender and then also which disciplines tend to use flexibility more because ariel does tend to emphasize like displays of flexibility I would say more often than not, because the degree to which it tends to be a gendered discipline also tends to mean that at least in sort of like commercial work, female areas, aerialists are sort of more prevalent. Um, but I, so I think there's, there's a way in which all of that is tied together, like the objectification that goes along with flexibility and the discipline and bodies that are female or coded as female or read as female or feminized but i'm gonna have to think about it more to come up with like a, a, a like more coherent sort of why so it's a great question too good to answer in like two minutes in the, the end of panel chat it's pretty darn good stab at it though so thank you for that um as karen as karen was popping off the uh popping off the screen she suggested actually for all kinds of reasons that we maybe turn to like closing this in like a minute or so um is there uh someone else who wants to make sure that there are more stabs made in interesting directions if not i want to say yay I was so stimulated. I was so I, I was I was provoked. I was taken on journeys and I am thrilled because of it. And um, I want to say yay, yay, yay. We're going to do more. We're going to do more. The part of this is the, the glory that this is not done. We will be seeing each other really soon. <laughs> Seriously, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know that Dana was doing back to back yo, yo, yo person's work here. And, uh, and all of the, all of your contributions today are just glorious. So um, till soon, till soon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>